In this video, I will show you how to use Unitank for tank calibration analysis. This video starts immediately after you have finished doing automatic classification. Here, I am showing all the other points, which are the remaining points that do not belong to the floor, shell, roof, beams, columns, or floating roof. I am going to run the Auto Detect Appurtenances button to automatically detect all the deadwood for calibration and analysis. I select the range between 0 and 6 feet because this is typically where all the appurtenances are located. If you have a floating roof, you may want to lower the upper range of the detection to avoid floating roof structures, seals, pontoons, decks, etc. Once the detection is done, we can examine the results and modify them as needed. As I go around, I can add my sumps by using the Detect Sump tool. Because we do not always see the bottom of sumps, we can edit the length of the sump to ensure the sump has the correct depth. You can use the edit function to adjust diameters, thicknesses, centerline elevations, and names to match engineering diagrams. We can also modify a pipe or nozzle from opened to closed. In the view, you will notice that a pipe or nozzle that has a thickness will have a dual line outline. If we modify the pipe or nozzle to be closed, the view will now show a single line outline. When we are satisfied with all the appurtenances, we can use the detect column tool to automatically add the columns as deadwood. Again, you can edit the diameter and thickness of the columns or even change them to closed columns. Once we have delineated all the deadwood, we need to define a strike and overflow. Typically, the strike will be at the bottom of the gauge. Once you have located the strike location, simply place a point close to the floor at that location. Then, use the Find Plane tool to fit that point to the floor at that location. The data density under the gauge pole may be sparse depending on how low the gauge goes so you may need to modify the find plane parameters to use a larger horizontal search area and a smaller vertical search area. If the gauge is relatively close to the floor, you may need to use a 2 inch vertical search area to avoid the gauge well data points. If an overflow is observed in the shell, place a point at the lowest point of the physical overflow and add the overflow definition. If there is no physical overflow, but an overflow height is supplied, simply use the go to function to position the view center at the specified elevation. Place a point at this elevation and add the overflow definition. If no overflow is supplied, you can continue on to capacity analysis. Unitank will use the full shell height as the overflow height. Finally, we need to enter some tank properties. Here, we can input the shell course heights as well as thicknesses. 
If the course heights or thicknesses repeat, you just have to enter them once. Unitank will repeat the last course height and thickness as needed. Once we run capacity analysis, we can look at the output folder. Here you will see the straps for each course. We will now go ahead and create the capacity report as well as the image table. This tank was done internally and had no floating roof, so we can go ahead and delete the sections that don't apply to this tank. In this part of the video, I will show you how to use the different tools to manually delineate deadwood and to add a floating roof deadwood. You will notice that when I ran auto detect appurtenances, I used a lower upper threshold to avoid the floating roof deck. So similar to last time, we will go around and examine the results. If we need to redo some of the automatically detected appurtenances, we can select them and delete them. We can select the specific points and detect each appurtenance individually. We can also just delete sections of a pipe or nozzle by selecting only a part of it. We can manually finish the drain hose by using the line tool and drawing it in. Toggling between side and top view will ensure that you add the points at the correct location and elevation. Have a look at the automatically detected portion of the drain hose to see what the external diameter was and use this diameter for the new section of pipe.
We also need to modify the automatically detected portion of the drain hose to make it closed. While we are here, we are going to add the floating roof drain. We are going to use an extrusion for this. To add an extrusion, we need to outline an object with the polygon, rectangle, or circle drawing tools. The extrusion tool then adds a thickness to this outline to give it a volume. We are going to use the extrusion tool again, this time to delineate the cleanout. We are going to go in side view and use the polygon tool to delineate the shape of the D-door, then we will give it a depth. Lastly, we are going to add the floating roof. A floating roof is defined by its height at low leg and high leg, weight, and submersion depth. We provide several calculators to calculate the submersion depth of different types of floating roofs. These are located in your install directory. Now, when you run capacity analysis again, the floating roof components will be automatically populated. In this last part of the video, I will show you how to use the detect appurtenance tool in more ways. This heating coil was not detected when we ran the auto detect appurtenance tool. Here, we isolate the coil by selecting a narrow horizontal cross section of data. Then, we hide any data that is not part of the pipe. Finally, we run the Detect Appurtenance tool. If the tool gets confused, you can hide more data that does not belong to the object. As a last resort, you can always delineate it manually using the Line tool like we did earlier for the drain pipe. If there are still sections that are not cleanly traced, you can delete those sections and just bridge it with the manual tools.
The last feature I will show you is how to copy and paste Deadwood. For example, if we painstakingly delineate one of these floating roof support legs, we don't need to draw them out by hand every time. Once we have drawn it once, we can simply copy it in its entirety to the other locations. While the orientation of the copied object is not correct, its purpose as Deadwood is served.